Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Today, we're gonna to be building this pretty interesting bar. It's got a nice amount of storage in the front and a secret compartment in the back to store your top shelf booze. The body of the bar is primarily made of walnut plywood. In a second here, you're gonna see the cut list, which probably won't be that helpful since I used some scrap plywood I had left over, but still you get the idea. To cut the plywood down, I started by breaking it down into rough pieces with my track saw so it was a bit more wieldy, and then I ripped it down to rough widths on my table saw, and then I went back and cut everything to exact sizes with the table saw and also sometimes using my crosscut sled. I'm going to be edging the plywood with strips of walnut so they're a bit more durable relative to glue on edge banding. So I just cut a bunch of quarter inch strips on my table saw. Most of the pieces only have edging on one or maybe two sides so I trimmed all those to length with my crosscut sled. The top of the table though has banding that is mitered on every corner, so I used my miter saw and a sacrificial fence and bottom to reduce tear out. I applied some glue and then clamped on the edging with painter's tape. Now I ended up getting a little bit of space in between some of the edging and the plywood because there wasn't a perfectly flush connection. I probably should have run the strips through my planer and then I would have gotten a much smoother surface, but you know, lesson learned. For the top where you have miters, just make sure that you clamp those corners really well. Once the glue dried, I trimmed off the excess edging using a really nice up-down flush trim bit from Channel Partner Bits and Bits. This is a white side bit that's coated with Bits and Bits proprietary Astro coating. It works really well. I'm a huge fan of these. If you're interested in these, I'll leave a link in the description. Also use code NBUILDS15 to get 15% off. As I mentioned before, I ended up with a couple gaps, so I went back and used a mixture of sawdust and wood glue to fill those in. Then I sanded them lightly and things actually turned out pretty well. So my plan is to tape off the top so we can get as clean of a cut as possible since it's gonna be seen. I'm also going to, I already changed my blade and hopefully that should help everything out, but that's the plan at least. So I waited to cut this until after I had the edging one. You could have also just done edging separately and had two separate pieces for the top, but I kind of wanted to make sure it was a holistic look and it actually worked pretty well in the end. Yeah, that worked out really well. Look at that. Next, I cut the grooves for the sliding front door. The bottom is about a quarter inch deep and the top is about three eighths inch deep. Unfortunately, I was using a cheap bit. Well, that could have been much worse. This thing just got destroyed and popped off while I was using it, which could have been way worse if it had hit me. So I'll count my blessings, but yeah, not looking really great. So I'm gonna have to order something new and get back at this in a little while. Disappointing. This is why you always buy nice things. After my bits and bits downcut spiral bit arrived, I went back at it and well, you can see the results. This is why you buy nice bits. 
The majority of the body of the cabinet is held together with glue and biscuits, so I used a scrap piece of wood to hold my biscuit joiner in place when necessary, and then went about cutting all the different biscuit slots. While I glue the body together, let's take a look at the hidden TV lift I'm going to be using from this week's sponsor, TVLiftCabinet.com. I've worked with TV Lift Cabinet on another build where I built a hidden TV cabinet, which I'll link above. That was really fun. Having worked with two of their lifts now, I can say that the quality is really, really good. You'll see in a minute here how strong the steel is. But also, they come with really good instructions, detailed drawings, and are easy to install. So if you're interested in a lift, definitely check them out. I'll link in the description below. Okay, so I'm going to use some iron-on edge banding for the front of the insert top. Since I don't want it to show up when the insert is closed, and you definitely see that quarter inch strip of the other banding if I used that instead. This stuff's really easy to use, just not quite as durable. You just line it up and iron it on. Then I used a razor and sandpaper to trim it down. I used pocket holes for a couple of different pieces that I wanted to be able to remove later. All right, so I'm using this bigger Craig pocket hole jig to drill all my pocket holes for the back and the bottom of the insert. However, you can definitely use the smaller version, which I also have and have used extensively. I'll link it in the description below. It works just as well, just not quite as fast. Next, I essentially repeated all of those steps to assemble the insert. I had waited until the main cabinet was built to do this so that I could do some field measurements and then make sure that everything fit just right. Okay, so here's a quick tip that took me forever to learn. I guess people just assume you know this in their videos so they cut it out, but once you have your glue up clamped, go back with a brush water and a rag to clean up all that squeezed out glue. This saves a ton of time later and once I learned this it really reduced the level of stress when I was doing glue ups. I cut down these aluminum rods which I'm going to be using as guards on the inserts shelves. These will hold the bottles in place just in case they move a little bit when the lift moves up and down. I sanded them with 1000 grit sandpaper to clean them up. Then I installed the bottom and back of the insert using pocket hole screws. While it's not necessary, I like using this 90 degree clamp I have from Craig, which is really helpful for holding two pieces together when you're screwing in the pocket holes. I used a drill block to drill a pilot hole, and then I went back and drilled out the actual size of the holes that will be holding the aluminum dowels. I glued on the top, making sure that the spacing was just right so it would fit correctly inside the cabinet. Next I glued and nailed in a few stop locks on the bottom back of the cabinet. These will make it easier to install the back which will be holding the heavy lift and they're not going to be seen anyway. Alright, so we're using this really nice lift from TVLiftCabinet.com. It's actually a swivel lift so it's got a little bit more complexity but it's also a lot stronger. 
because it needs that structure when it swivels a TV. Obviously we're using it for a bar and not a, a TV, so it's gonna be a little bit different. We can actually remove a couple things. It's also a little tricky to get this on here because we have a box that needs to fit perfectly within, I think I gave myself a quarter inch on each side, but really we need to get it pretty precise so that there's no, everything's flush on the top. So that means we can take off a couple things like this, and I'm debating whether or not I need to keep this support here. I think we can get rid of it. At, at least we can trim off these pieces, which will allow it to be a little bit more flush with the back and we don't have to round out the back of our, uh, our cabinet here too much. The lift is really easy to install. You just screw in the top and bottom brackets and then the lift itself hangs on those. The top has bolts that can be adjusted on the sides to adjust the level, but mine was perfect after I installed it so I didn't need to do that. I temporarily installed the back holding the lift with a couple pocket hole screws. Next, I cut out the bottom back of the insert and routed it flush to the back. This is necessary to allow you to install the holder of the lift on the back of the actual insert. Okay, on to the base. I cut down some two inch by two inch foot blanks, then drew out the angle that I wanted to take off and set up a simple jig. To everybody out there who's new to woodworking, I know jigs can seem like a lot of work, but honestly, they save you a ton of time and they give you a cleaner and often safer outcome and are way less stressful in my opinion. I cut down the pieces that I would need for the rest of the base using my crosscut sled. Then I glued everything up. I found it was easiest to just glue the two side pieces first and then go back once those were dry and glue on the long stretchers. I ended up deciding to grind off that perpendicular support we were talking about, and that way it will sit flush with the cabinet. I was pretty surprised and honestly impressed with how hard the metal was. It took me a little while. Even though no one's going to see it, I decided to paint it and then I reinstalled it. I actually made the insert a bit shorter than I probably should have, although it is a good idea to give yourself a little extra space on the bottom and then use spacers like this since it's going to be difficult to get everything exactly perfect when you're trying to cut the height of the insert. To hide the spacers, I glued up this half box and then installed it with eight figure eight connectors. I used some Starbond CA glue to hold the spacers in place. I'll leave a link and a discount code in the description if you're interested in trying this stuff out. It's not going to hold any weight here, but it will do a nice job of keeping it in place while the insert just sits on there and uses gravity to connect. I will be connecting the lift to the back of the insert with screws, so I drilled in a couple extra holes. I cut down the doors out of 1 quarter inch MDF core walnut plywood, making sure that the height was just about 3 8 of an inch taller than the opening, and then I kind of snuck up on it until I got just the right fit so it would insert and slide in there. You can use a lot of different pulls for these, obviously, but I like how holes look, so I drilled those out with a Forstner bit. The 
the control box for the lift doesn't fit neatly into the bottom of the cabinet because of how I designed it. And anyway, I wanted it on the outside so that I could use the manual buttons on the box in case the remote died or something like that. So I used the same Forstner bit and drilled a hole into the bottom. I traced out where the box would go and then I rounded out a spot for it. Depending on the height of your base, you may not need to do this routing, but my cabinet only sits about two inches off the ground, so I wanted a little bit more clearance. With that done, I installed the base with some figure eight brackets. Then I removed the back and installed the shelf back with pocket holes. I also screwed into the shelves from the back for some extra strength in the shelves since they're going to be holding a lot of heavy bottles. With the shelf back installed, I could finally go and glue on the top of the base. After a little sanding, I finished everything with three coats of water-based poly using my finish sprayer. Installing the insert so it fit just right took some patience, but eventually I got it right with a really nice snug fit using these spacers. I used a couple pieces of durable foam that was used to package the lift as a means to hold the aluminum rods in place once they're inserted, that way they won't bounce around while it moves up and down. And with that, we're done. I really like how it came out. It's got a fairly subdued look, which lets the walnut grain and the novelty of the lift really stand out. This was a really fun project, and I want to thank tvliftcabinet.com again for sponsoring the video. I was actually surprised at how much weight this thing can hold. You don't want to pack it completely full, obviously, but what you see here is just fine. I considered making this lift a bit more over the top and accentuating the fact that the lift can actually spin 180 degrees and maybe put some LEDs on the back or something like that. But in the end, I decided to go with a little bit more of a subtle project. That's all to say that there's a lot of room for improvement and or alterations if you guys want to make this. I'll leave links in the description below to everything I used as well as some plans and drawings. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps the channel out a lot. And finally, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.